Shalom. Shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Kodash, and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who are on the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from, through the Holy Spirit. Honor, salutations, and blessings to the men that are preaching the gospel of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, in all sincerity, diligence, and truth. And peace, grace, and blessings be upon the house of David, which is the elect men, women, and children that are listening and learning, staying in the Holy Spirit, and keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai day in and day out. So, uh, just wanted to do a uh, lesson, uh, something that uh, through the Spirit, um, you know, I've been, uh, you know, just meditating on today. Um, <clears throat> you know, considering your walk or your journey in this truth, okay, and um, how, you know, certain certain individuals, you know, certain brothers uh, uh, may just start it, you know, to, to, you know, get into the truth while you have other brothers um, that have been in this for a while, you know, starting with the elders and the, uh, uh, the apostles and the elder brothers and bishops and uh, camp leaders and so on and so forth. But all in all, um, as the scripture says, we all are, you know, striving uh, for that same, um, you know, uh, penny. All right, which is to be um, found worthy to stand before Yahweh Shai, all right, to be found worthy to uh, receive salvation. Okay, and, um, you know, uh, as of late, you have a, a lot of uh, uh, men who at once was considered uh, teachers, um, you know, of the gospel of Yahweh Shai that, you know, fell off for whatever reasons, you know, a lot of it has to do with um endurance okay because uh being able to endure is a, a virtue okay and um a lot of people are not able to endure uh this walk because they lose patience which is why how wish i said that in your patience possess ye your soul okay but you know um you have a lot of men who hang their hat on the fact that They've been in this, you know, been or are woken up to the fact that they've been, you know, uh, Hebrew Israelites, you know, for a long time. All right. Which, you know, knowing that you are a uh, Hebrew Israelite, you know, knowing your identity. All right. Your, your culture, your, your nationality, your heritage is a, um, you know, a beautiful thing. However, it's not just about knowing that you're an Israelite that is going to uh, save you. All right. It's about enduring until the end as Yahweh I said he that endureth until the end the same should be saved so you know uh, the the scripture that came to mind when I was thinking about this is here in the book of Ecclesiastes the seventh chapter the eighth verse which reads better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit okay so can, you know, dealing with the first part of this, which both parts of this uh, chap of this verse, you know, ties into the um, uh, the theme of the of, of the lesson. But you know, starting with the first part, it says, "Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof." All right, which is why, which is why I uh, you know entitled this lesson. Hey. Um, this is why I entitled this lesson. Better is the end of a thing, your journey in this uh, in this truth, okay? Because you don't want to be somebody, or you shouldn't be somebody who is just uh, uh, concerned about how long you've been in the truth, all right, or how long you've known about the truth. Let's say that, because yeah, being in the truth, all right, and being uh, 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 active, all right, and, and consistent, all right, and faithful for a, a you know duration of time is a beautiful thing. That's a lot here, just one second. Lucky about that had to put the put the puppy out the room, but um, as I was saying, um, you know it's a 
it's a beautiful thing being uh uh have been having long longeve- longevity in the truth however you have a lot of men that boasts in the fact that they've been in the, they've known about the truth for you know uh, uh well, x amount of years however the way that they were in the beginning isn't the way that they're ending are are or they're not in the same uh, spirit of fervency as it is in the latter part of, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, this age, which we know that the latter part, I should say, the latter part of our um, of our uh, walk, because we, we clearly see that we're at the end of this, you know, end of this age, which Peter spoke about that we should receive the end of our faith, which is, you know, even the salvation of our soul. So when the Lord looks at your works, right, and he looks at your your diligence and your fervency, he's not going he's not going to look look at it as as if, oh, you know, they, you know, the first seven, uh, seven years or six years you were you were on fire. Right. You was out there. You was teaching. Right. You 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 um, uh, uh, was diligent. But then the last, you know, three years, four years, you kind of gotten cold but that's okay you know you know those first six years you you didn't you 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 were good all right the last three or four years you didn't put any work you didn't bear any fruit but it's okay nah because when you think about it like a tree right which the lord said you shall know my disciples by their fruit when you think of it like a tree that tree is only beneficial to you as long as it's being productive and it's bearing forth fruit season after season year after year so if it bear fruit the first six years you know and it was great fruit that's you know but then the last three or four years it, you go to the tree every harvest season and there's nothing there what's going to end up happening to that tree it's, it's not it's not good for anything except to be hewed down and thrown into the fire the first six years of that tree isn't going to um isn't going to exempt it from the fate of being uh, hew down because of the last three or four years <laughs> it hasn't been doing anything you know like that saying in the world i believe it was a, a song what have you done for me lately okay you know it's an old song but that's how you gotta you gotta have your mind while you're you know when you're in this journey it's about your your the, your latest works you know there's even another saying you're only as good as your last you know your last work so with that being said reading this uh um verse again better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof so applying that thing to your journey all right your walk how the lord views you because think of it another example when you first come into the truth you know hey you, you, we all are rough around the edges right we all were be, you know, uh, uh, had the old man that had to, you know, be put off. And that isn't something that is uh, lightly or easily done. OK. And there's times where we've slipped, we fell into temptation. Right. However, as you continue to grow and you continue to uh, uh, grow in the, uh, in, the, in the faith and in the wisdom and knowledge, you become more and more refined. To the point or to the part, just, you know, think of it like a, uh, a a gold, right? A piece of gold. When you first find the gold in the earth, it doesn't look valuable. It's not shiny. It's not uh, desirable, right? But as it goes through the process of being refined and, and tried, at the end of it is what you see the real value of it, okay? So in your journey and your walk in this, in this uh, uh, truth, all right, in, in, in this um in this uh, uh ministry, you gotta continue, or shall I say, your end gotta be the uh, better than how you begin. It can't be the opposite. You can't start off great and end good. I mean, end bad, because then you're gonna receive the reward of ending bad. Okay, let's get that here in the book of Luke, chapter fourteen, verse twenty. Um, eight, it says, for which of you intending to build a tower 
sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. See that? To finish it. All right, and we are that tower. We are that building. We are that, that house. As the scripture says, ye are God's building, right? And if you don't count the cost, if you're not daily trying to, you know, uh, 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 be built up, right, going from glory to glory, then you're not sufficient enough to finish what you started. Verse 29, then what happens? Least happily, after he had laid the foundation, and that's what, a, you know, a lot of men believe, that because they laid the foundation or they were, you know, there, in, in, you know, years ago, they've been, uh, uh, they've known about the truth, you know, uh, uh, years before other men that they may know. But it says, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. You see that? Finish being complete. That's like the Lord when he was on a, you know, when he came on the earth, he didn't say it was finished until it was finished. Until he get the last words he said before he uh, uh, gave up the ghost was it is finished. That's like him coming on the scene and, you know, the first year he was, he, he's preaching. And then afterwards he's like, all right, yep, I'm done. I'm good now. But he didn't finish it. He didn't finish the process. Okay. You got to finish it. You got to what you start got to be finished. So reading back in verse 30, it says in saying in, in this, then you begin to be mocked, right? When you speak about, and I'm not speaking about anybody in particular, but this is just a mindset that individuals have when they are proud, right? And especially if they're, if the, if they've been in this truth for a certain amount of years and they, they, they hang their hat on the fact that they've been around a while or they've been there for, they've known about being an Israelite and they've known about the, the gospel for a long period of time, but they haven't put in any uh, work recently. What ends up happening when they come back around because you got a lot of men that's coming back around now because they see all of these end time prophecies taking place. You end up be you end up uh, being mocked because you just laid a foundation and dipped. When you think about you seeing buildings, um, storefronts or you know whatever apartment buildings that end up starting being built and then it just gets deserted, that's an eyesore, right? People pass by and they look and they and that actually could bring your property uh property value down that is a uh, you know uh, around that area because. It is something that is not finished. So now you just got some, you know, you got the 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 uh, concrete down. You may have the the shell outside of the walls put up, but you don't got the the whole finished product. Okay. So this is why it's important to finish the race, to finish the work. That's why it says better is the end of a thing than the beginning of it. Because the beginning of it is just that. It's just that's how it that's how it starts. What the Lord is concerned about is how you finish. All right. There's another scripture that um I believe it's in the book of James. Uh is that five. Let me see. Yep. Uh James chapter five verse Okay, uh, verse 10 says, Take my brother and the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. See that? And in order to get to the end, you have to have patience. And your patience isn't just waiting because remember what the Lord said, right? He said to occupy till I come. So it's not just you just sitting around twiddling your thumbs and and just waiting no you're supposed to occupy which means be in business all right similar to the uh parable that yahweh i gave of the the various different talents you see so verse 11 it says behold we count them happy which endure ye have heard of the patience of job 
and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Okay, so the Lord has mercy. All right, he, he's very pitiful and pitiful and is of tender mercy, but he's only going to give that uh, a mercy unto the ones who had patience. All right, the ones who continue to, to be diligent. The ones who, who whose finished product was better than the beginning product of it. Because, hey, uh, there's another scripture that ties into this. Uh, just hit me. Uh, Ezekiel, was that third chapter? Ezekiel 3 verse, let's see. Yep, Ezekiel 3 verse 20. It says, again, when a righteous man that doeth turn from his righteousness. All right. And, and this is applied also to men who put their hands to the plow. Men who uh, uh, taught, okay, who, who took up the office of an evangelist, of a teacher, of a prophet, all right, of a, uh, a pastor, okay, a bishop, a leader. When, a, when you turn from that, this is not something you can just say, oh, I'm done doing. You work for the king of the universe. You work for Yahweh and his right hand, Yahweh shot. So when you turn from doing that work, when you turn from uh, stop stopping to, uh, you know, stopping uh, feeding his sheep. That's an iniquity that you're committing. Because the Lord said, what if you love me, feed my sheep. So it says, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die. Because thou has not give because uh, because thou has not given him given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. You see that? So all of the righteousness. All right. All of the lessons, all of the videos, all of the times you went out on the highways and byways, all of the. Uh, high holy days that you went to all of the hebrew that you known all of that is not going to be remembered if you turn from your first love as it says in revelation the 12th the second chapter if you turn from doing what you were originally doing remember you're not supposed to uh, lighten up you're supposed to tighten up you're supposed to elevate you're not supposed to go you're not supposed to regress this is about uh, uh, moving forward, going on and on. And there's various different ways that happens. It's not just so uh, you used to do, you know, three videos a week. Now you do seven videos a week. All right. There's different offices that the Lord puts you in. All right. Different responsibilities that you start to, uh, uh, you know, the Lord gives you. But you're never supposed to regress. It's never supposed to be a thing of regressing. All right, because if that happens, that means that you have put off, you have put on, I should say, the cares of this world. And you have put off the mind of Yahweh Shai. See, because uh, even when Yahweh Shai was a, a child, where it says um, he grew in stature. Let's see. Oops, I spelled stature wrong. He grew in stature and in wisdom. Uh, let's see. Stature. Wisdom. No, it's in the book of uh, Luke, I believe. Yep, okay. It says, And Yahweh shall increase in wisdom and in stature and favor with God and man. See that? Why? Because he continued to elevate. And, and that's the same... A position that we are supposed to be in we're supposed to increase like i said before going from glory to glory okay um acts chapter 20 verse 24 it says but none of these things move me yeah none of the afflictions none of the 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 trials the tribulations because that's going to be a part of it you're going to go through things as scripture says that a just man shall f uh falleth seven times right so yeah in your walk in the be from the beginning all the way up until now, right, which we're at the end of the end, 
you're going to have obstacles. You're going to have ups. You're going to have downs. You're going to have good times. You're going to have bad times. You're going to be a base. You're going to be a bound, right? However, you're supposed to continue to walk. You got to think of it like uh, uh, stairs, right? <laughs> you know, Jacob's ladder. You're never supposed to go down the stairs. You always are supposed to continue to climb up. And each, you know, each step is going to uh, uh, come with different types of tribulations and afflictions. However, your duty and the fact that Yahweh Shai is, you know, paved the way for us because we didn't even have to do it perfectly. Right. And I'm speaking about being perfect in the flesh. Yahweh Shai did the hard part for us, which, which is to be perfect in the flesh. We don't even have to be, and obviously we can't, but we don't have to be perfect in the flesh. But your mind, right, has to be stayed on the Lord. You got your mind got to be perfect toward the, the toward the Lord. That's why Peter talked about girding up the, the loins of your mind. But let's read this back here. It says, "But none of these things move me; neither count I my life dear unto me, so that I might finish." All right, that's synonymous with end. My course with joy, the ministry which I have received of the Lord Yahweh Shai to testify the gospel of the grace of God. See that? Because when you finish your course, you can have joy. You can you can say, you know what? I I kept let's, let's go with that. I kept the faith. I can t I kept I kept fighting. I kept uh 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 you know showing full proof. Let's read it. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, it says, But watch thou in all things. And that's another thing, okay? When you first come into the truth, you're not watching as much. You should not have be. You should not be watching as much <laughs> that you have been watching now. Meaning, you should be watching even more now than when you first came into the truth. Okay? You're supposed to be more keen on your watchtower now than when you first came into the truth. So it says, watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, right? Any afflictions that you go through is not an excuse for you to finish. It says, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I want to uh, read this in the uh, NLT. Starting from verse 5, it says, But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of, of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news. Right? That's a that's a part of that's a part of uh, uh the, the, the description. When you put your hands to the plow, when you uh um start to teach, it says, and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have remained faithful. Okay? Remain faithful. And when you remain faithful, that's you continuing with uh, to persevere. Continuing. Let's see what this word they got for faithful. Continuing in your... um. Oh, they, uh, oh God. Yeah, continuing in your um in your lot. Okay. Um hmm, right. Fidelity, faithfulness, the character of one who can be relied on. Because remember what we're what we are, you know, uh, uh metaphorically auditioning for. Which is what? Inheritance, joint inheritance with Yahweh in his kingdom. And having the responsibility of being of a part of the governing body. I'm speaking into the men who, you know, uh, uh, put their hands to the plow to teach. Okay. What we are auditioning for metaphorically is to be one of the judges that are sitting upon the thrones, judging the world for all eternity. And that's why the Lord said, what? That, uh, uh, well done, my good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. Enter into the joy of my father and I shall make you Lord over, over many. Okay. Hey, let's read down here. It says credence, more conviction of religious truth, uh, especially reliance 
upon Hamashiach for salvation, abstract, abstractly, constancy in such profession. Okay, you got to be constant in your profession. And in order to be constant, that means you got to be consistent, <laughs> where, where consistent comes from, right? You can't disappear and do a reappearing act and believe that, oh, you're still good. The Lord can't, the Lord can't view you as somebody that is being relied on because you're not, you don't, you don't bear that character, that, that characteristic, which the word character goes back to the word image. You don't bear the image of somebody who can be relied on. Although you may have started that way, but hey, what, once again, your your track record as of late shows shows opposite. Why do you think when people give um when people give references right to a job, they ask for your you know your your last your last three or four uh, uh latest jobs. Or let's say you gotta you you want to get a mortgage and they need to know how much you uh you know make. They ask you for your last three paychecks. They don't say, "Oh, give me your paychecks from when you first started working." <laughs> that don't hold any value. It doesn't hold any any weight in the matter. What they want to see are you able to are you able to be relied on to pay your mortgage? So we need to see your most recent pay stubs. Are you able to be relied on as a as a, 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 a teacher. So we need to see your most recent works. You see that? That's how that work. And that's why going back here, it says better is the end of the thing than the beginning of it. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. And when you're patient, then you're going to continue. You're going to be faithful. All right. No matter the cost, no matter the, 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 the cross you got to bear. And ultimately, if you are really somebody who believes on the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and on the promise, then you're going to remain faithful, right? And you're going to be patient. Um, the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, it says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience. You know what? Since we, you know, we keep coming across it, let's see what it says. It says steadfastness, constancy, endurance. In the New in New Testament, the characteristics of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose. Okay. Once again, being someone who teaches, hey, and and even to you listeners, your if you. I'm, I'm speaking, you know, about the office of being a prophet or a teacher, but, you know, the ones who are listening, you're supposed to actually also have been elevating in this truth while you are, are you know, waiting for the end to come, waiting for your Howard Shai to come. The way that you conducted yourself in the beginning should should be lesser in morale or lesser in righteousness than you are conducting yourself at the latter end. And this goes for everybody. Okay. Everybody who nameth the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. The way that we uh, 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 think. The way that we. Our actions. Toward the end. We should be. We should be more and more. Of the mind. Of. The, 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 the kingdom of heaven. Than of this world. Than in the beginning. So it says, not swerve from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. Okay? Persever perseverance, sustaining, steadfastly. Right. So these are the these are the attributes that the Lord is looking for for that from that good and faithful servant. So it says. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. See that? You got to do the will of God first, and you got to finish it, and then you receive the promise. And uh, uh, two examples, which I thought of from both sides. Saul, he started off good, 
right? He was, it was Saul, the proverb Saul was a uh, prophet sign among the prophets. Okay, the Lord was with him. But then what? He stopped. He stopped uh, 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 being obedient. Right. He had the foundation. He laid the foundation of a righteous man, but he didn't end that way. <laughs> and now his story, when you think about Saul, you think of about a wicked individual. You think about somebody who was uh, displeasing in the eyes of the Lord because his end was worse than his beginning. All right. Uh, contrary, uh, Manasseh. Manasseh did a whole hell of, of, of a bunch of wickedness. But Manasseh ended up, the reader got it right here, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 33, verse um, 18. It says, Now the rest of it says, Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer unto God and the words of the seer that spake to him in the name of Yahweh God of Israel, behold, are they not they are written in the book of the kings of Israel? His prayer also, and how God was entreated of him in all of his sin and his trespass in the places wherein he built high places and set up groves and graven images before he was humbled. Behold, they are written among the sayings of the seer. Right. And um, I actually had it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I typed in God forgave Manasseh. Right. And it, I just, I didn't even read this, but it says, uh, the depths of God's forgiveness, King uh, Manasseh will forever go down in biblical history as a shining example of the power of God to forgive, right? Because just like how the Lord said he won't remember any of your righteousness that you did if you ended up in wickedness, vice versa, the Lord, if you ended up, you know, if you started off wicked, but then you repented and turned back into the Lord, then he won't remember none of your none of the, your wickedness that you prior that you did prior. See, hey, the Lord is is ways are equal. <laughs> so it's better to be Manasseh than to be Saul. All right, because once again, the Lord's mercy is great. All right, the Lord is a uh, 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 slow to anger. But the scripture says you will not off of uh, you will not all acquit the wicked. So if you stay in your wickedness, then you're gonna get uh your you're you going to get the reward of that. But if you repent, turn back, then you can you can get uh, uh um exempt or mercy from the Lord. But all in all, the ones who came into this truth, did the works, and then fell off, you are likened unto that. Um, slothful servant but this is here second peter chapter 2 verse 20 says for if after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord and savior howish hamashiach right that's when you say oh no i'm a, a Hizra, uh, israelite you you name the name of the heavenly father and his son right you 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 will probably give you you know probably get a, a hebrew name right you have the, you have all this knowledge of the scriptures, the breakdowns. You know who Esau is, who we are, where Babylon the Great is, what the kingdom of heaven is, who that's for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then it says they are entangled. They are again entangled therein and overcome because you can fall, but if you fall into mischief, you are overcome. Now you are 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 in a mindset are entangled in the uh, 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 the, the 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 affairs of this world. Which this world, the scripture tells you that the Lord is an uh, is an enemy of this world, and this world is an enemy of the Most High. So it says the latter end is worse with them than the beginning, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness, than after that they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned into his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So, hey, there's there are are, are spirits, all right, vessels, <laughs> Israelites, who were created to fulfill this proverb. And 
this is not somebody you want to be. Okay? You do not want to be the one, the dog that turns into his vomit again. Because anybody that's ever seen a dog do that, it's always disgusting. It's always uh, 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 a... Uh, a um, nasty sight is something that you, you know, uh, <laughs> you do frown upon. Okay. And, and likewise, individuals who have been years in his truth and they just disappear or they stop pushing. All right. They stop teaching and then they go back into the world and they still may know that they're Israelite. They still may, you know, uh, 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 give you the salute but the works that they're doing are not the works that they were used to which you know them for know them for to, to be doing and the lord said what it's better for them than to them for them to not have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them and the lord yahweh gave us a commandment if you love me feed my sheep all right so um, you know, that's pretty much it. I'm going to end it there, Lord willing. This was um, edifying unto the elect. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, Rakakwadash. And until next time, Shalom.